RAM scrapers are a category of malware that have been used in a number of fairly prominent recent large-scale data breaches. Now that said, RAM scrapers have actually been around for quite a while, since about 2009 or so. And RAM scrapers really belong to a broader category of malware known as info stealers. Uh, an info stealer is basically a piece of malware that's designed to steal information off of a computing device and then basically exfiltrate that data, that information, to a malicious third party. Now, some of the more prominent examples of RAM scrapers include things like Dexter, Alina, Black POS, and Kartoja. Uh, in this last example, the uh, pronunciation is actually based on the sounds that the letters make with respect to the Cyrillic alphabet rather than with respect to the Roman alphabet. We often see RAM scraping malware deployed onto point-of-sale terminals, or POS terminals. And point-of-sale terminals are the devices into which you slide your credit card when you buy something at a store. Uh, typically, the point-of-sale terminal will have a special magnetic card stripe reader. It might also have a numeric keypad into which information like a PIN number can be entered. The point-of-sale terminal is also a computer. It processes data like any computer would. And like a typical computer, the point-of-sale terminal might contain a hard drive where the data is stored. Uh, it will also have an operating system for carrying out basic functions. In many cases, that operating system will be a general one that's maybe widely available. Uh, it might, in fact, be the same brand or maybe a version of the one that you're running on your computer right now as you're watching this video. The point of sale terminal might also have a network connection so that it can communicate with other devices, typically communicating data out to other devices. For example, that network connection could be used to do things like transmit credit card transaction details with the back office, validating those details, and so on and so forth. And then the point of sale terminal might also have what's known as a random access memory, or RAM, and that RAM is effectively used as scratch space for carrying out various computations. Because it's a computing device, it's possible for some malicious party to install malicious software or malware onto a point of sale terminal. And this could be done by someone with physical access to the device, or perhaps an attacker has managed to access the system through its network interface and then leveraged some type of technical vulnerability or weakness in the system to set up a backdoor that is then used as a conduit for dropping malware onto the system. Your credit card or debit card has a magnetic strip on the back and stored in that magnetic strip are pieces of information related to your account. For example, uh, your credit card number, uh, the expiration date, the card verification code or value, uh, typically that's referred to as the CVC or CVV. And these are the additional digits actually that you see on your credit card, but which are not part of the credit card number itself. You'll often see them on the back of your card, for example. But in any case, imagine that you're buying something in a store and you slide your credit card into the reader on the POS terminal as part of a transaction. Pieces of information like your credit card number, the expiration date, the CVC or CVV values are read into the terminal and processed to allow that transaction to proceed. Now, because point of seal terminals are handling sensitive data, things like credit card numbers, they have to have some security measures in place. And these measures are actually mandated as part of the Payment Card Industries Data Security Standard, which is often abbreviated as PCI DSS. For example, to be compliant with PCI DSS, sensitive data that is stored on the hard drive of the terminal has to be encrypted. It's required to be encrypted. Along the same lines, Sensitive data that's transmitted over the network from the terminal also has to be encrypted. However, keep in mind that the sensitive data has to be processed at some point. And of course, while it's being processed, it can't be encrypted, just by definition. And so there's a moment in time when the data resides in what's known as the POS terminal's RAM or random access memory in an unencrypted or clear text format. RAM scrapers, as the name implies, attempt to steal sensitive data at precisely this moment of time. So there are, loosely speaking, about three parts of the operation. So the first thing is that the RAM scrapers have to extract the contents of the RAM in an appropriate fashion. 
Second, the RAM scrapers basically have to search those contents for sensitive data, things like credit card numbers. And then third, the RAM scrapers have to exfiltrate or transmit that data to a place where it can be more readily accessed by the bad guys or by the attackers. So let me talk about each of these steps in turn. To extract the contents of the RAM, the RAM scraper first identifies the processes corresponding to particular running software applications that might be of interest on that system. Now there may be a number of processes running, uh, but only a small number actually handle or process sensitive data. So RAM scrapers might, for example, start off by enumerating the actively running processes and identifying which ones are of deeper interest. Uh, for example, many POS terminals have an application known as POS.exe that's responsible for handling sensitive data. Another application that's seen in a similar vein is POSW32.exe. And both of these applications, POS.exe and POSW32.exe, directly process the data that was read in from the card's magnetic strip. The RAM scraper will then examine the memory contents of the processes associated with these applications. And there are multiple ways to do this, but one of the more straightforward mechanisms is via a Windows API that is called read process memory. And this read process memory call will take the memory contents associated with the process in question and put those memory contents in a data structure known as a buffer where they can be analyzed. So that brings me to the second step, namely searching this sensitive data or searching this data for something that might be of interest or that might be sensitive. Now this operation is quite crucial, but it's not that complex. Uh, for example, credit card numbers, CVVs, expiration dates, and so on, take on very specific forms. In particular, credit card numbers typically comprise a sequence of 16 digits. More so, these digits conform to certain well-understood patterns. Also, uh, credit card numbers in particular have to satisfy what's known as the LUN test. And this LUN test basically involves adding the digits on the card together in a certain way and then checking if they satisfy a particular mathematical property. The idea is that if the criteria are not satisfied, then the sequence of digits does not constitute a valid credit card number. Uh, but the flip side may not be true. For example, it's very possible that a 16-digit sequence of numbers will satisfy this LUN test or LUN criteria and still not be considered a valid credit card number. But for the most part, this test turns out to be a good sanity check, if you will, and it basically allows you to eliminate many erroneous possibilities for uh, credit card numbers. The upshot is that at this stage, the RAM scraping malware can identify candidate credit card data that is stored in the memory of the point of sale terminal. And this candidate credit card data can be stored in a file uh, on the POS terminal itself until it's ultimately exfiltrated. So that brings me to the final step, which is to exfiltrate this data. One approach would be for the attacker to physically access the system and copy the file containing the candidate credit card data. Of course, this approach is not gonna scale well because it requires physically accessing the system, uh, but I do think it's worth pointing out that physical access is not entirely untenable either. For example, you may have a rogue store employee involved in the heist and they could certainly do it. But a second approach would be to use the network connection on the POS terminal. The attacker can either access the system directly through this network connection, or alternatively, and perhaps more scalably and more preferably, they can have the RAM scraping malware transmit the file containing sensitive data to another system that itself can be more readily accessed by the attacker. So at this point, the attacker has access to a large swath of candidate credit card data, They've got the numbers, CVV codes, expiration dates, and so on. The attackers can then either use this data themselves, or more likely what will happen is they will resell this data in the underground markets to a different set of cyber criminals who will profit by generating fraudulent transactions against these stolen credit card numbers. Now, naturally, different RAM scrapers will differ in some of the underlying intricate details, but hopefully this video gives you a broader flavor for how this type of malware works in general.